Hello there. Hello from Scotland. Welcome to the MPC introduction of our new charity partner. I'm just going to pour myself some water here, which is actually a, uh, a good segue into uh, who we're going to be talking to. So I'm just going to let you guys all pour yourselves a glass of water. And uh, I'm going to wait for our new charity partner to join us. I'm very excited for you all um, to to uh, to meet our new charity partner with the Ocean Conservancy. Um, I'm just going to see if they uh, we can bring them in here. Talk amongst yourselves. And sent them an invite to Nick Malice. I'm glad you guys are drinking water. All right. And that might be Nick. Nick, hello there. How are you doing? Great. How are you, Sam? I'm drinking my water as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a terrible segue, but uh, but I thought you know it's a it's a great way to introduce everyone. Well, to yourself, Nick. Um, you are the vice president of the Ocean Conservancy, or vice president of conservation, should I say? Um, maybe I'll let you introduce yourself. But I'm really just very proud to to introduce this uh, this new charity partnership. You know, we've obviously worked with a number of other charities over the past few years and uh, to great success. And um, our peakers love hearing all about our charity partners. So maybe you can just introduce yourself and uh, it's great to see you, buddy. It's great to see you as well. And uh, thank you. And thank you to all the peakers that are joining around the world today. And yes, uh, I am the Vice President of Conservation for Ocean Plastics at Ocean Conservancy. And I've had the great pleasure to, to be with the organization for almost 13 years now, working on the issue of, of plastics in some way, shape, and form. Um, but my love for the ocean starts many decades ago. Honestly, one of my earliest memories of life is uh, building sandcastles on the beaches uh, and crying at the end of the day when my parents would force me away. So um, I've had the great fortune to, to make a career out of it and to work with incredible partners like you and all the peakers and so many others around the world to protect our ocean. Yeah, well, I, you know what? It's so funny. When I think of uh, building sandcastles, this might be not the same uh, memory that that you have. I remember it raining and being cold and freezing in the beaches <laughs> in Scotland, but certainly is a uh, you know uh, is a great pastime. And I loved you know visiting the the beaches not only around Scotland, but now I do get to travel a lot and going and seeing uh, other coastlines around the world. And um, I guess part of what I love to do uh, not only sort of enjoy the the landscape, but also you know I love surfing. It's something I, I started doing recently. Um, I don't know if you surf. I, I sure do. And uh, for me, that really embodies the spirituality that is the ocean. It is, it is my calm and the calmest place I can find in the world. So I, I did not know you were a surfer. So uh, hopefully we can make that happen at some point in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use that term very, very loosely. But, uh, but no, it's been, you know, an amazing way for me to, to, to see other you know, oceans, uh, other bodies of water uh, around the world. And definitely through friends of mine that even work, you know, uh, in um, maritime com conservation or um, with the wildlife there, <clears throat> it's been an amazing way for me to, to see, you know, the difference um, in, I guess, cleanliness and in, in, in the, the state or the health of the ocean. And I think the ocean is definitely a reflection on the health of the planet, right? Uh, absolutely. And one of the questions I was curious today is, is you know, because you, you have had uh, the great travels around the world through your work, I'm, I'm curious what one particular moment or, or maybe moments stick with you in terms of just awareness around either the beauty of the ocean or one of the great challenges that may have come to a surprise of why we need so desperately to work to ensure our oceans remain healthy in a vibrant place. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, I I love getting out there and it is a great place uh, to, to, I guess, for mindfulness, for relaxation, certainly sitting on the, on, on the beach or, or getting out into the water. I know a lot of people do love to swim or surf or kayak or paddleboard, maybe successfully or unsuccessfully, but, but I have noticed and, you know, and it does worry me, <clears throat> you know, that we do use the oceans as a, as a kind of trash can, you know, we um, obviously have a lot of plastics in the ocean, but not only that, you know, you look at, you know, a lot of the, the wildlife that's getting um, destroyed, whether it's intentionally in overfishing or um, in, you know, disasters in, in sort of oil spill or gas leak. Um, and it, it, it does concern me because I think, 
you know, it, it is sort of the life force of, of the planet. And I think if we're not careful and we, we let it over tip, it's certainly going to, it's going to affect all of us uh, and very quickly. Um, I mean, what are, what are, what is the state of the ocean right now? Am I, am I wrong about this? No, uh, I wish you were, uh, but, but sadly you're not. And yeah. I think when we think about the current state of the ocean, it really boils down to a simple equation. And that is there's far too much bad stuff going in and we're taking far too much good stuff out. And it's all happening at a rate that the ocean simply cannot adapt to. And as you noted, you know, verbatim, the ocean literally is the life force of our planet. And hopefully everyone on, on this chat today um, has taken a few breaths since we started. And one of those is courtesy of the ocean. And that's because half of the mm -hmm. oxygen on Earth comes from the ocean. Um, but it does far more than that. It, it provides food for billions of people around the world. And that's going to be increasingly important with a growing global population. And it also provides clean water. And it moves heat around the globe, which is so critically important in terms of regulating our climate and our weather. And for the last 60 years, the ocean has done its fair share, more than its fair share, for absorbing a lot of that heat, by taking on almost 93% of all of the heat in the atmosphere. And we know because of that, the ocean's becoming hotter. Um, and a hotter ocean means that... Uh, the climate is changing, weather events are changing, and that affects all of us, whether you live on the beach at the coast or hundreds of miles inland, the weather affects all of us. So we all truly are connected to the ocean. And we certainly can't talk about the health of our ocean without talking about the, the plight of plastic pollution, which is another big problem and one of the, the core focuses of our, of our great partnership. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, even in the news, and certainly I'm very aware and all around the world, you know, we are, we are being affected by, by climate change and by the, the extreme weather, you know, extreme changes in weather. Even in Scotland, you know, um, the weather's been very unpredictable and we certainly see on the East Coast in America. And now, you know, on the West Coast, um, you know, this, these, um, this, you know, real extreme weather and it's affecting people. And, and also, as you said, you know, for many people around the world, it's also a source of food. It's, it, well, as you said, and I love that. It's, I never knew that. And it's 93% of the, the oxygen that we breathe. Oh, about, half of, the about yeah. half of the oxygen, about half of the oxygen we breathe comes from the ocean. Just right. that about 93% right. of the heat generated over the last decades from fossil fuels has been absorbed by the ocean. So it really is a buffer for us against the atmospheric heat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's fascinating. And I suppose, you know, it, it can get depressing. And I think, uh, or rather <laughs> upsetting, you know, like, what, like, we're, we're all doomed but um but there, it's what is so fantastic about you guys and what the work you're doing is that you know it's it's not it's not over yet we we can make a difference we can make a change and what would be you know how how do you guys go about that i mean even in we could probably talk about every subject here but what about plastic you know what, what do you guys do um to to make a change there yeah, you're right. We, we could talk about that all day, um, <laughs> but we, we'll dive in. I'm sorry, we could talk about all the issues all day, but plastics is one that, that certainly <laughs> yeah. um, is near and dear to our heart. Um, but the, the current state on the global uh, you know, ocean is we know that 11 million metric tons of plastics are flowing into our ocean every year. And to put that into perspective, that's more than a garbage truck worth of plastics going in every single minute of the day. Um, and we know that plastics are expected to grow over the coming decades, triple by, or I'm sorry, double by 2040, quadruple by 2050. And 99% of all plastics made are made from fossil fuels. So when we're talking about the, the plastic pollution crisis, it is also an interconnected climate crisis. And so by tackling plastics, we are also doing our part to reduce the future threat of climate and, and, and greenhouse gas emissions. So um, reducing plastics production is critical, not just for the health of the ocean and for communities that depend on it, but also for our ever increasing um, warming planets. And at Ocean Conservancy, uh, again, we, we are, have been proud to be working on this issue for decades with um, our, our longstanding international coastal cleanup really being at the core of everything we do. And this is something hopefully the teachers will learn a lot more about over the coming year. Um, but since 1986, we've had the great pleasure to work with 17 and a half million people around the world in over 150 countries to clean up our beaches, clean up our waterways, clean up our ocean. In the process of doing that, those incredible individuals have removed more than 350 million pounds of plastic. 
Um, and, and that number is staggering. The, the individual items is over 400. And I can assure you that every one of those items they have removed truly matters and truly makes for a healthier beach, a healthier ocean, and a healthier planet. And, and we can't just clean it up, though. Un, un, we always say it'd be great if we can put ourselves out of business because cleaning up the beaches in perpetuity is not the end-all goal. The real goal is to reduce the amount of unnecessary plastics that are being produced in the first place so that we don't have to deal with it at the end of its pipe when it's entered the environment. And so that's where we work very hard to look upstream at passing policies that phase out those unnecessary plastics and ensure the proper systems are in place to manage those plastics that are important for our life. And a hallmark one occurred just this past year in the state of California, where over the next decade, they will reduce the amount of plastic packaging and foodware by 25% writ large. And what that equates to is 23 million tons of plastics being taken out of the equation over the next decade, which is equal to the weight of about 26 Golden Gate Bridges. So policies are starting to change. We know people are more passionate than ever about this issue. And so there couldn't be a better time for Ocean Conservancy to, to partner with you and the My Peak Challenge and the incredible peakers around the world to step up and collaborate to make an even greater impact. Ah, well, Nick, I think you've done a beautiful segue there because I think, you know, you, you, you mentioned those numbers of people that you guys have been working with. Well, I would like to offer you another 20,000 plus uh, all around the world. You know, you can see everyone here commenting. We've got people all around the world, from Uruguay to Brazil to yeah. Spain, you know, UK, America, uh, literally a global organization here. And I know that our peak has have got behind every charity that we've done from One Tree Planted to, you know, the food banking to, to blood, uh, blood Cancer UK. So it really has been um, uh, not only fun for them, but also they want to do something. And I, I guess the question I've got for you is, you know, what can our individual peakers or, or even our ambassador groups, you know, what can they do to make a difference? Because it, these numbers you say are, 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 are so big, you know, what can one person do? Yeah, they are staggering, but I will also say we gladly accept every peaker that's ready to go. Um, it's been awesome just to see all the chatter leading up to today's conversation. So looking forward to much more. But at the end of the day, it's, it's individual action um, is where we can start. And, and through cleanups, they truly are a transformative experience, not just for the ocean and the health of beaches in the ocean, but also for us as individuals. And participating in cleanups change the way you see the beach, change the way you see plastics and make you a far more aware individual in your everyday life. And so um, working with us around the world, wherever you are, inland, coastal, in the mountains, underwater, um, you can download our mobile app, CleanSwell, um, which is our mobile app to collect data on the amount of trash and debris you're cleaning up from the environment. And that information goes straight into our global database that we use all the time to inform policy like that game-changing policy that was passed in California. And in the mobile app CleanSwell, it's available in both Apple and, and Google Play, you can use the tag MPC for the My Peak Challenge group, which will allow us to show the collective impact of the entire peaker community around the world and the impact they're having on the beaches and waterways. So that's one thing. Secondly, um, we mm -hmm. all can reduce plastics in our everyday lives that we can do without. That's not saying get rid of plastics. It's a great material when used properly, but things like plastic bags, like our reusable um, coffee mugs or water bottles, those little actions go a long way. And then lastly, it's using our very powerful voices, our individual voices, voices scaled up, create real collective change. And so support reduction plastic policies that again, phase out those problematic materials, but also help reduce greenhouse gas emissions that we know are a win for the climate and for the ocean. So those three things, clean up, uh, reduce plastic, support reduction plastics um, are the trifecta where they make a real difference and we're looking forward to doing that together. Wow, I think you put that so so succinctly and so beautifully. And I think, you know, obviously people are going to want to know more information and we will supply it. And I know you guys will too, but, you know, I'd encourage everyone to download that app. But, um, you know, I can see, you know, people are, are determined and willing and they're ready to you know, jump on this cause. And, and, and to also feel that it, it's not just about, you know, a beach cleanup. It's, it really is about the, the work that you're doing, um, lobbying for, for, for change, but also, uh, for each individual or each group to, to think about, you know, the small things that can make a difference from, as you said, you know, um, reusable plastic cups or, or glass bottles, et cetera, et cetera. And it, 
if we start to make small changes, it's a much like our fitness program, you know, small changes lead to a, a, a daily habit and lead to a bigger difference. So um, I really love uh, all the information you're giving us. It's, it's really exciting for us to, to be a part of this and to partner with you guys. I guess, should we, should we answer a few questions maybe? So I'd be a, happy to. We have a little look. <laughs> and I, I hope they're, uh, they're all, uh, they're all uh, very uh, clean, shall we say. But um, <laughs> what you were saying is a great idea. So, uh, all states in the U.S. should ban plastic. So it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we would love to. And as you, but as you said, plastic is a useful uh, if it's used right. But so you, you had you were um, instrumental in this new policy in, in uh, California. Is that right? Yeah, we were one of, of many groups that played a critical role in passing that policy. And, and yes, policies across the board, if all 50 states, if we could pass something at the federal level, um, it would be fantastic. But it's not about banning plastics outright, right? Plastics have done amazing things to advance medical innovation, provide us safety when we're flying or driving vehicles, do incredible things for, for bringing communities out of um, you know, unhealthy or poorly developed situations. So plastics as a material are not problematic, but there are those products, particularly single use plastics, the things that end up on our beaches all the time, bags, straws, bottle caps, uh, foam food and uh, beverage takeaway. These products we now know we can live life without them. We have seen communities do it. And so there's a subset of products that we do need to focus on to phase out. And that's why it's so exciting right now. Yes, at the state level, yes, at the country level, but right now at the United, Station, United, Stations, United Nations, there is a global treaty being discussed to take bold action on plastic pollution. And so something that would have overarching global impact. And so that's where it's so critical working at the individual, state, national, and international level to put in place those smart policies that, that get rid of what we don't need and ensure we can live with the great value that those other materials do provide. That makes it very clear. And I, I see a lot of questions actually, Nick, about the, the app. Um, obviously when I repost this and you guys will as well, but maybe you could just briefly mention the app again and what, what, um, well, where to find it, I guess, and also you know, how, to, how to use it and what it does. Absolutely. You can, you can go into um, the, the app store um, and, or Google play and it's clean swell. Um, and you can also visit oceanconservancy.org. You can find a landing page on our website and they'll take you to those stores. And essentially you, you download it, you open it up, um, you know, you enter your email address so it can log your historical cleanup impact. But once you go in, you, you select whether you're doing a beach cleanup, a waterway cleanup, maybe an underwater cleanup. And as you're doing that, you tap the items that you're finding. The icons are already in there. Um, and when you're done with that cleanup, you hit submit. If you don't have a wireless signal or cell signal, it'll store it until you get back into service. And as soon as it does, it sends that information straight into our 38-year-long database um, to inform all of the policies we talk about, the, the data that people collect are the very data that we used with lawmakers in California, that we use with lawmakers around the world to show that certain products really do have a disproportionate impact. So you touched on something, Sam, I just want to underscore. It's like the cleanups are not just a solution. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, the cleanups are our starting point on this journey. And, and we welcome you all, but it really is a gateway into many issues, not just plastics. And so um, we see real change as a result of them. Yeah, I think that's, you know, partly the reason I wanted to work with you guys, you know, obviously the great work you're doing, but it's about awareness. And, and I think, as, as you said yourself, you know, it just, it's not just about cleanups, which I'm so excited to get our pickers <laughs> out there and have, you know, mass groups of them cleaning up. It'll be, you know, really, really rewarding. But, but it's, it's literally planting a seed in each and every person. And hopefully they're spreading the word as well about how we then go about our daily lives and the choices that we make, whether it's anything to do with the ocean at all, it's, you know, whether you choose to take uh, your reusable bag to, to the grocery store or, you know, you take your own cup or uh, recycle a bottle. It, it really is about these small changes. And I think that that's what you guys are standing for. Well, that's what I understand is that um, it's about making small changes. And I think that's why it fits so perfectly with NPC, you know, small, small habits, helping yourself and you're helping others. So, um, I'm really excited about this partnership. I think we could talk for hours. There's so many questions <laughs> here. I really want to get to them. Um, but it's been really good just to have a very brief understanding from you, Nick. Uh, you're so eloquent. And I think 
We would love more information. Um, obviously, go to the app, go to your website for more information. We're going to post your videos, um, your you know your information infomercials on our platforms, and um, yeah, any anything you want to leave our peakers with, or just welcome them to to the clean swell. I'm so excited to have you all join us. I will also say, from whether it's been in the Dominican Republic, Hawaii, the, any beach I've been on around the world. You sweat, you're working hard. It's not just doing good for the ocean, it's doing good for the body and mind as well. So it's a perfect combination for peakers everywhere. Um, Sam, thank you so much. Thank you to the entire peaker community. The year ahead is gonna be one of great impact and uh, all of us at Ocean Conservancy are ready to go. So thank you again. Oh, Nick, thank you. And I think we are all ready to go as well. And as you said, it's, it's something that will be reflected in their daily life. You know, it is mindful it is uh physical uh, and i think i think you've got the right group here so hopefully our peakers will spread the word guys will have more information from nick and his amazing uh charity and the work that they do um but please all of you thank nick for joining us and uh we'll catch up real soon buddy and um we're gonna post a lot more information on our platforms as well sounds great sam thank you all so much cheers have a great day buddy thank you speakers clean swell i'll see you guys soon thanks nick bye-bye Thank you. Bye-bye.